Alright, so that is the end of the tour then. Right. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So Lake Tobias was founded in 1960 by J.R. Tobias and Mr. Tobias brought back a BB bison, a bobcat, and a coyote in the back of the family station wagon after a trip to Kansas. And many friends and neighbors came to see these animals and this inspired Mr. Tobias to open the park as a public attraction in 1965. Now, ever since the park has been privately owned and run, we do not accept any funding from the state or federal government, so any expansions or improvements that are done here at the park depend entirely on park revenue, so thank you. Now, after Mr. Device passed away in 96 and the unfortunate passing of his eldest child in 2010, the park has been run by his six remaining children, one grandson, and Mrs. Tobias, who still lives right here on park property. Her house is located directly across from the petting zoo, which is up on top of the hill over there in the main part of the park. And you guys are all more than welcome to join oh, I can't see it. out after the tour. Now, Mr. Device was also part of an excavating business. The lakes we have here were man-made. The largest one you can see is you're heading back towards the concession stand. It'll be the one on your right. That is called Lake Tobias, and it's about 40 feet deep in the center. Alright, so we are going to see animals, but before we do, I just have a couple precautions. It will be bumpy out here, so when we are moving, I ask that everyone remain seated. However, as soon as we come to a complete stop, you are more than welcome to stand up, feed and pet the animals, take pictures, anything like that. And you may hand feed all of the animals we have in the field. However, just be cautious of the birds. They're friendly, but they have a terrible time distinguishing between fingers and food. Oh, boy. If you want to feed the birds, make sure you flat hand it um, or just drop it to them. Like I'm were, staying away from uh, birds at all costs. And then if you happen to drop anything of yours off the side of the bus, like hats, sunglasses, cell phones, anything like that, Please let me know right away. I will step down and retrieve it for you. No one else is allowed off of the bus because it is too dangerous. And I do ask that no one go past these front two seats here for your own safety. Because we have a lot of animals that like to stick their heads on. And some will even climb up onto the bus. Well, that's only if they're feeling it. So no guarantees, okay? All right, before we head out, I do want to talk about the birds over here. We have some gray birds. They can also be completely white. They're the same species. And those are called rias, and they come from South America. They are the fourth largest flightless bird in the world. They're about five feet tall and weigh anything from 45 to 75 pounds. Now, rias lay very large eggs. And I have one here. This is equivalent to about 12 chicken eggs, and it is a very valuable food source in South America. Now when the female bird is ready to lay these, she will allow the male to lead her to a nest that he has made, and then she'll lay about 15 to 25 of these. After that though, her job is done. It is up to the male bird to incubate these eggs for about 35 to 40 days, and then he will raise the chicks that hatch for an additional six months or so until they are old enough to fend for themselves, and that's what these guys over here are doing. You might have noticed when he stood up, he had a bunch of eggs under him. They've been there forever, so hopefully those eggs will hatch and oh, I can, now we'll I can barely see it. Alright, that's all I have about the birds in the intro. We are gonna head over here and get started. Okay. Okay. Oh they will. Well, with the other animals we have on the field, and they are highly susceptible to diseases. We do want to keep them healthy. We also supplement their diets with special vitamins and minerals to boost their immune system. And the undersides of their tails are, in fact, white, which is how they got their name. Whenever they uh, feel threatened, they raise that tail up over their back and then bristle it out to about four times its original size. 
and this is called flagging. They do this to silently alert the rest of the deer and the herd of the threat. And we do a fawn to man, there's two right in there. Fawns were born at the end of May, it was the beginning of June, so earlier this month. And breeding for them occurred last year at the end of September until the beginning of October. When fawns are born, they are spotted like that. That's to help camouflage them. But as they age, the white tails lose those spots and become an even brown color. Although that's not always true. We have a completely white white tail here down in there. He's not an albino though. He's what's called the consistent, which means it was a genetic mutation that caused him to be white. The only albino we have here at the park is our albino Burmese python. He's a great big yellow tail. He lives in a brush child building, so if you've never seen him, you can go and check him out. Okay, that's all we have about that. Unless there's something in here somewhere, we are going to head out of the main part of the safari field and see what's out there. They don't normally spit saliva. Instead, they will regurgitate food from one of the compartments in their three compartment stomachs and they will spit that. So the llama will whatever come up to you, lower its ears all the way back and start making this real terrible noise. You might want to duck. Maybe duck a little lower than the people behind you. And then this one up front here with the horn. This is an elid. There are more of them over there, so I'll tell you about them in just a little bit. Did they get it, Michaela? Did they get it? Gavin, you give them one. Take a picture, bro. Put your hand down there. Oh, they're picking them all. Don't get them watch them because you've got a lot of animals to feed. Oh, Michaela, now, now, did he take it from your hand? Did he take it from your hand? Put your hand down there. Put your hand 
down there. Maybe he'll take you. He already took mine. Did he take yours from your hand? Not quite. Ah, it dropped. Now, there. There, Gavin. Can you give it to him? <laughs> Flies on him. Why? Because flies like them. Oh, it was a Did he get your fingers? He took you right out of your hand, didn't he? Hey, where are you going to do that? Oh, well, we'll have to look and see. This is the Look out, buddy. Oh, 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 Small bird, but. Yeah. So these tan animals here, these are Elin, and they are the world's largest oh, antelope and they come from Africa. Full grown male can weigh about 2,100 pounds. Our big guy sitting in the corner, you can kind of see his horns sticking up over there. The nails don't have a body to come grass. They produce this metallic clicking or popping noise. When certain animals die, they become grass. And antelopes eat grass. Top speeds of about 40 miles an hour, that clicking sound can be heard for miles. They also have very large horns. They grow in a spiral down toward the base and then straight back. And those can reach lengths of about three feet. Really? Must be cool up today. Yes, Mr. Yes. 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 But not that. Not that one over there. The white one does. He's sitting down with us. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Here comes one. Here comes one right up beside you. Look, look, look. He's coming. Maybe he'll take your food. Wow. Maybe he'll come up. What you need? Look at that. Tell that little white one just laying there. Laying there on a big Yeah. That's blazing. Covered a lot of ground, huh? Yep. Okay, that's all we have about that. We'll keep going. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm hot. I told you it was going to be hot today. I know I took a little Look, there he is. I took a picture of one man. Did you take a picture of him? No, <coughs> that, that, that thing. The, the white bird. Okay. 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 That's what's so cool. This is a bumpy ride, isn't it? Okay, so on the left side here we have two male rias. 
and they have chicks with them. We're not going to stop because we don't want them coming up to the bus yet. It's teeny tiny. But we'll go slowly by. So we'll Look at the baby birds. Oh, all right. Can you see them? Look over here. Look over here. Look at all the baby birds. Look at 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 the it's a lot better uh, out here. Uh, out here to handle without that humidity. I mean, the last time we were here, it was just miserable. Here's a whole family of born ones. Okay, so all the little deer here, these are called European fallow deer, and they are native to Europe and parts of Asia. The males are regrowing their antlers, but they're a little different than what we're used to seeing here in PA. Fallow deer grow what's called the palm antler, and I have one here in my hand. They don't count the points on a palm antler. Instead, you measure its width, and their trophy is about 9 inches wide. Now, fallow deer are very hardy deer. They're pretty easy to raise and not very susceptible to diseases, so farmers do breed them for their meat. They also come in a variety of different colors. They can be dark brown, white, or spotted. The reason that this is significant is unlike other deer, they do not lose those spots as they age. Instead, the color they're born is the one they remain in adulthood. So all of these deer here, these are all fully grown adult fallow deer. Then we have those reddish brown cows over there, and those are called Watusi. And the Watusi are the oldest domesticated cattle in the world. Originally domesticated Gavin. by oh, the you got Watusi some over here. tribe Gavin, in Africa. Some over here considered the most sacred, so they would never kill them for their meat. And they would drain out some of the blood from the bull and mix the milk from one of the cows. And then the warriors would drink this mixture during religious ceremonies. So that Watusi over there with a the skull-like pattern on his forehead, that is the largest male Watusi we have on the field. And the horns of his weigh about 100 pounds each. And then I have this one here shoving her head in the bus. She looks like a bison, but it's actually what's called a beefalo. A beefalo is a cross between a bison and any other type of cow. Ours is crossed with either the wapitis that I just told you about, or maybe our Texas longhorn. Yeah! Oh, Gavin, sit there, Gavin. It's okay, what are you going to do? The males are actually infertile. Here he comes. Put some in your hand. Oh, no! That's a big buffalo. Huh? Oh, beefalo. Oh, I wish he'd come up here so we could touch their fur. On their, their I talked to Jessica and Pika. Here, she'll take it. Here, here. I just see corn. You have to read corn. Yeah, they're spinning out something. Why do you spit out corn? They don't want to eat the cob. They're chewing the corn off of it. Yeah, they're All chewing right, the corn off. I'm going to pull up a little bit so we can see the next one. <laughs> I'm going to eat my teeth to the milk. What do you think, huh? Pretty cool, huh? Okay, get out. Thank you.
Look out. Look out. Oh, God, this same thing. Look, he's walking with us. Look. <laughs> walking with us. Walking. No, thank you. I ain't touching. That's a back cow. That's a big cow. That's a big cow. Did he come back up this way? No. But there was a coming to us. All right, so the really shaggy cows that we have here, including the ones up front, those are Scottish Highlanders. And in Scotland, they are used for their meat and milk, but here in the U.S., they're primarily for show. And they can be black, red, brown, or a creamy tan color. Here comes you might the deer. Also Look, the like deer's the coming there. again. Here. Because they have long hair that hangs down over their eyes, they're also the known as hippie cows. I wish it was a buffalo. Where's the buffalo? I wish he would come back up here. He did. He did. He did. Oh, here's some. Here comes some. They want some. I see your poop. <laughs> I hate mine. It's ahead of me. I see. They got plenty. They poop. Ew. Find the poop. All right, that's all we have about them. We'll go see the next one. There's a giant. Eating. Eating corn. It might. It might come up. You put it in your hand like this. Put it in your hand like this. Yeah. And then you can look down. And then they'll come down. Okay. Did you get the baby's horn? Right. So first we have this pin white cow here. 
And there's a bigger one over here. Those are Texas Longhorn. And Texas Longhorn were originally brought to this country from Spain. Back in 1541 by Spanish explorers. So by the time they came back to settle here, they were running wild by the thousands. They are very slow to gain or lose weight, so they can survive entirely on a grass diet. Now, other cattle have to have their diet supplemented in order to survive, especially during the winter. And they also have very wide set horns. The record was a width of about 10 feet 9 inches from tip to tip. And I see their poop. Then we have these gray animals here. There's a big one sticking her head in the front of the bus. There's a lighter colored one heading towards the other bus. Those are Asian buffalo. They're native to India, Nepal, and Thailand. Although they were originally domesticated in China thousands of years ago. Uh, the Chinese would use them to work in the rice fields and other waterlogged land because they have very wide sets. You make food? That prevents them from shaking down in the muddy soil. Animal shit. the mud, though, it helps to keep them cool. Look at them running over there. Gather them up. Look at them running and running and running. More animals taking off. They're doing their business. Oh. Another very large animal. They can weigh around 2,600 pounds. And finally, how many of you guys like the mozzarella cheese? Anyone? Well, the best mozzarella in the world is made from the milk of the Asian water buffalo. So if you would ever have buffalo mozzarella, these are the kinds of animals that that comes from. They're eating mine. Are they eating yours? Yeah, because I dropped some. Did you? Throw one out for that. Here, let's throw it out for this ear over here. Oops. Then we have these two here uh, with the droopy ears and the rounded foreheads. Those are both Brahmin and they come from India. They are related to four different types 